Hey guys, welcome to episode two of season three, Beers, Bourbon, Whiskey. Of course, man, it's your boy Q Lewis holding it down live from the 48205. I got my man Bo in the building. I say. Man, we definitely back in the building for the uh, second episode this season. Excited to be back. And uh, we're going to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland. Scotland, yeah. All right. <laughs> you was close, though. It was close. <laughs> hey, you know, I ain't never been good at this shit. Geography is not my strong suit, in case you didn't know. All right, so we're going to Scotland, which uh where the word Scotch comes from. So I completely <laughs> fucked that up. And I probably should edit that, but I'm not, because we keeping it real on this show. So uh, I'm going to keep it real and just keep all right. that in there. Hey. Um, so we're going to uh, Scotland, and we are checking out the... Uh, Belvini, right? All right, so Balvini, yeah, yeah, Balvini. Excuse Balvini. me, let me just, just, I, same way I say Louisville. So hey, Louisville. What <laughs> Louisville. All mm-hmm. right, so we we got scotch this time. We had uh, we had a couple of scotches last or season before last. Season actually. one, yeah. Um, season one, and I ain't gonna lie, I I didn't really like it. <laughs> so before we started doing this show, Bo had already told me like, you know what, you probably not gonna like this one, but. Um, our other option was uh, another Crown Royal, which we had a, a different Crown Royal last uh, last season. But I just figured, let's try something new. And you know what? I might actually enjoy it, especially after I kind of cheated and read what uh, <laughs> what it's going to taste like before I actually taste it. <laughs> um, so all the people out there, if you uh, whatever you're drinking on right now, pour you up a shot. Or if you happen to have some uh, Balvini, then you can have a shot with us. Um, but go ahead and crack that open because we're getting ready to get to it in a minute. Um and then, of course, we got to talk about some other stuff, as we always do. If you're familiar with the Beers, Bourbon, Whiskey podcast, then you know that we're going to get into some stuff. Um, also, if you're watching on YouTube right now, and obviously if you got social media, make sure that you do follow us on IG at Beers, Bourbon, Whiskey. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, Beers, <laughs> Bourbon, Whiskey, right? Yeah, podcast <laughs> is what I write in. It's not actually in the name. So make sure you check us out and also check out each individual host. So hit my man up at Big Cbo 94 all right? And then hit up your boy, man. Q dot Lewis three one three. All right, so make sure you hit us up on IG. All right, so um, let's get to it, dog. Let's, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this because this is something that you had already, mm-hmm. and uh, as as we mentioned before, I had a little dust on the cap, so you <laughs> had it for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, what made you even pick this one? Because you had this before, though, right? Yeah, I've had it before. Yeah. So what what made you get like more? Um, first time I had it, I was in the military. Okay. Uh, it's a little different, you know. Um, I really kind of enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed like the palate, but like the aftertaste, right? Gotcha. You know, it, it, it was kind of, this might not sound appealing to y'all out there. Because uh, aftertastes but, are normally horrible. Yeah, you know, it <laughs> right. was it, it was kind of like a, like a bitter, you know, like yeah. bitter almost, but for uh, whatever reason, like no I. No wonder you said I wouldn't like it. For whatever reason, I liked it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, I had picked, I saw it out somewhere, like, randomly, you know, I'll pick up bottles when I'm out, you yeah. know, just, you know. For sure. And uh, I just had, just, I had it for a few, I think I had this bottle since about 2013, 2014. Oh, okay. Like so it's, it's, it's aged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we I mean, it was already aged. Right, but yeah, exactly. So yeah. it was even more aged. Yeah. Like, like seven years ago. Yeah. Well, this is a special occasion. You busted out for the Beers, Bourbon, Whiskey podcast. So people that's watching right now, uh, hopefully you guys are excited because I'm excited. And plus, I read that it says it's uh it's been uh its maturation process was in the Caribbean cask. All right. Mm. So when I think of Caribbean stuff, I always I always think of something sweet. Wrong. And, and I'm, like yeah, that. something like yeah. that. So I'm wondering if it's gonna have like a a, a somewhat sweet taste. Because if it does, then I'm probably gonna love it because I got that soft palate. And that's okay though. <laughs> that's okay if that's what you got, though. And today I was prepared because uh, I don't know if you can see it all <laughs> on camera, but I have water <laughs> just in case the shit is too hard for me. <laughs> I'm gonna pour a little couple drops of water in there, though. Hey, uh, real quick too. Hey, shout out to nephew, classic pothead. For sure. Appreciate the bucket cap, bro. Oh yeah, no man? doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, I peed you. Was, you were yeah. sporting it. Yeah, so we uh we supporting black businesses around here, especially yep, yep. especially our own black businesses. That's right. That's right. Just discussed one before we got on too that I'm thoroughly excited about. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so uh, yeah, back to uh, back to Scotland. Um, so what we go what we go talk about today though? We go segue a little bit. You can go ahead and bust it open while we getting it started. Is. You know what I'm saying? And of course, if you're from here with the beers, bourbon, whiskey podcast, then you know we still do the ritual of smacking the bottle. Hopefully nobody gets sick. <laughs> um, but yeah, so today, man, we're talking about, uh, you know, we, we're talking about a term, first of all, that, uh, is kind of popular now, I guess, because, uh, Ooh, I can smell it. You can mm, smell it. Yeah. Yeah. 
As soon as you bust mm-hmm. it open, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the way the bottle made. It's almost made like a sifter. Yeah, it is. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I just peeped that. Yeah. So if y'all watching it right now, I just peeped something. There it's made go. like a sifter at the top. My bad. You said people of color. Though? Yeah, people of color. Y'all. So it's a term. Mm-hmm. It's a term that uh, I, I think has become a little more popular because there's a lot of things going on in the black community, and just like most times, uh, nothing. We can never have anything of our own. <laughs> so, <laughs> so once we're having a movement, then all of a sudden, every person who's got melanin uh, <laughs> has a movement, which uh, we go get into that in a minute. And uh, also, too, we got a book that we go talk about a little bit. I haven't got a chance to read it yet, but um, I think it's going to be pretty interesting and kind of add to what we're talking about today. All right, so people of color, dog. Let's just uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, first of all, let's, let me ask you this, though, because mm-hmm. uh, I think I mentioned this off air. Is uh this is something that this is a term that I had heard before but never really gave much reference to. So like when was the first time you actually like started paying attention to that to that term, people of color? Man, um mm-hmm. <laughs> people of color, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it was it was in in the military. The military. Yeah, when I when I when I first really heard it. Like I've I've heard it before. The first time I I guess someone re- really referred to a group of people that I was in as people of color and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, it just didn't sit well with, you know, it's, right. I'm looking around this group that this person is referring to and I'm like, there's a Samoan, you know, there's a Hispanic person back behind me. I think there was <laughs> right. even an you know, like, so. Everybody's back Yeah, there. like, like culture wise, like, right. our cultures are totally different, you know, so Definitely why are different. we being lumped into this? One category of people of color, right? You know, and I know some folks are gonna be like, "Well, no, they're just they're just saying that to represent, you know, people that have melanin in there." Blah blah blah. That's bullshit. Whatever. Come <laughs> on, that's now. bullshit. Come You're on not with now. that shit. No, I'm not with that. Shit. <laughs> You're not believing. Not with at all. the shits at yeah. all, bro. Uh, I'm gonna let you, you get know. into that. I want, I want to taste this a little bit though, because <laughs> the but smell, yeah. the smell. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, the ahead. smell is surprising because when I compare it to other uh, the other scotches that I've had. It does have a somewhat sweet aroma, mm-hmm. so I'm feeling like I'm gonna like this one, guys. Mm. You know what it's like? It's way smoother than the one we had. What what was the one we had? Uh, we had the one where we had a, a hell of an issue pouring it because <laughs> it had yeah, the little ball in there. That, that was season one. What was it? That um, was season one. I can't remember. Either one of those though. It still has that that kind of strong spicy bite to it at the beginning. Buchanan's. I, it Buchanan's, Buchanan's yeah. yes, that's it. But it's not <laughs> as hard as at the end. Now I know that you said like uh, a aftertaste. Mm-hmm. I don't really. I think it has. It's I there. think it has a bit of like a bitter aftertaste almost. You know, it's like there a little bit kind of. Have like you ever had sour beer? You ever no, had sour beer? So like or. Um, it kind of in the back of yeah. the palate, it kind of settles there. Yeah. But it's light though. It's not like a, it's not like a strong like. Oh my god, I can't no. take another sip. Kind of no, no. It's not strong. It is very yeah. subtle. You and know? That's, yeah. what, that's what I was thinking. I thought you were talking about like one of those. No, like I gotta sit this shit down type of feelings. No, but no. It's actually pretty good. I'm and a fan is. of. It. I like you yeah. like so you like it. I like it actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised. But but you can but you can kind of guess why though, right? Because at the beginning, it's it's a sweeter. It's yeah, a sweeter it's, it's like a vanilla, yeah. almost like a. A maple syrup, almost, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah you know. And see, you know, I, I like sweeter. <laughs> I definitely like sweeter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's not, it's really not bad. Because what, like I said, I broke out the, uh, it's, it's very dry at the end, though. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very dry at the yeah. end. I think that's where that, uh, where the bitterness, bitterness comes from. Bitterness settles in. Very yeah. dry at the end. It's almost like you didn't even drink anything. Yeah, it's like a, like, like a white wine. Yeah. You know, like No, a, you know what? That's a great mm-hmm. example. Yeah, that's a great example. So, if you've ever had... White wine before you know it's, it's really dry and it kind of like just disappears mm-hmm. in the back of the palate, and I think that's what this does. And I'm not gonna lie to you, man. This is a uh, this is decent. Okay, okay this is decent. Okay. So I'm surprised. So surprised. I like this scotch because I know I said in season one that I, I I hated scotch because of the two that we had. Even though after the show I ended up drinking both and getting drunk, <laughs> but that's besides the point. <laughs> that's what was available, so I had to get drunk. And um. So what I did with all scotches is I did what people do with people of color, right? I put them all together. <laughs> I did. I bust them all together. So it was like it was people of color. I like how you that's, did that. I like how like you tied those two together. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I and that's what people do when they use the term people of color. So like how I, I had a like 
an idea about scotches mm-hmm. and I kind of grouped them all together. That's mm-hmm. what people do with people of color. Yeah. And you said that you you kind of got familiar with that term in in uh in the in the military. Okay, yeah. Now, like before that, I mean, the term was was there. Yeah, it was. But there. like nobody really paid attention. I guess I guess it didn't. I didn't pay really pay attention. I know to I it personally, you know. Yeah. yeah. I guess it didn't affect us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that could be it. So yeah. I think when things don't affect you, you just kind of you know you just kind of let mm-hmm. it go. Um. So you kind of got familiar with the term, man. But like, when did it like kind of piss you off though? Like, cause I, I feel like it's it's some anger rooted in that. Yeah. <laughs> I, man, like. Uh oh! I feel the story coming. <laughs> no, there's there's no one. There's no one particular instance. story. Gotcha. There's no inst. Yeah, it's just in general. Like when I hear that, I, I, I remember that one particular time mm. when I was in the military, and I just kind of looked around. And I was like, "We don't look nothing like each other. Right. We don't listen to the same music. We don't even dress the same, other than this damn uniform. We don't do nothing. We don't hang same. out. You know. Yeah. So why am I lumped in a group with this motherfucker? You yeah. know what I mean? Just because yeah. they they had some. They have a little bit of melanin in their skin, a right. little bit, you know. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> definitely not as much as us, but a little. Uh, bit. You know, so. Yeah, I, and, I, and, and I understand it. I, I, I got to add on. So, okay. I hate it too, like how all our our movements get hijacked. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you might see something like Black Lives Matter or whatnot, and you might see, you know see us talking about like reparations. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, you know. Hispanic Heritage Month. They want to. They, they want to. You know. They want to come along for the ride and shit. Come along like, for the ride. Yeah. Oh, you know. Boy, that boy talking yeah. shit. You know. You know <laughs> shit like that. You know. Yeah. It's just like all, all our movements get hijacked. You know. I'm just like yeah. you know, culture vulture, same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's. I just I just don't like the term. I think and I think it's a double edged sword for us because when when we talk so much about and this is another term that I think is probably go resonate with you too is we talk so much about inclusion <laughs> and i think because we talk so much about inclusion when we try to talk about stuff specific for us then we get stuck in the in the part that we had always been preaching inclusion so now we got to include everybody else mm-hmm. so that's how you kind of get it's a double-edged sword because you want to get included but then once you get a, a moment to to kind of make your own movement then you kind of shot yourself in the foot because you didn't already said that we got to include <laughs> everybody right yeah. so like we kind of shot ourselves in the foot on that one um, and I think that's kind of how people of color came about, too. It's just like somebody's idea of inclusion. And I think everybody's idea of inclusion is different. I think depending on who you ask, you probably get a, a different you know, definition for it. Um, people of color, though, like, I'm not going to lie, I've heard that term a lot. And, you know, even more so now since, uh, you know, since everything is going on, with, on yeah. you know, with uh, our black culture and our black people and our black men and our black women uh, specifically. Um then I, I think that now it seems almost like a, and I almost hate to use this word, but it seems like a derogatory term at this point now. Almost. Yeah, yeah almost, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's like, so we have a specific issue, but now we have to share it with people that don't share the same issues. So that's kind of not yeah. fair. That's kind of like almost, and, and of course, I, I almost hate saying that's not fair because then I sound like I'm, I'm whining and shit because life's just not fair. But at the end of the day, though, I guess my my thing now is that since everything's been going on just more lately, I've been a little, you know, more upset or angered by the term. But now I'm just kind of figuring out, like, what do you, what do we do with it? Like, can you just, do we stop using it? Just let other people say it and we just stop saying it? I mean, it? I don't know I, too many black people that use it anyway. No, I no, I don't yeah, either, right? And typically it's corporate America or something like that, you know, blah, 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 some right. type of entity or whatever, you know. Um I don't know, man. Like, it, it, I, I, I don't use it. I don't use it. I don't use it. I don't refer to, to 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 black people like that. You know, man. It, I just don't like how you <laughs> take a whole culture and, and just tuck it away into this little pigeonhole. Yeah, you know, a whole bunch whatever. of cultures. Yeah, you yeah know. a whole bunch of cultures. I mean, yeah, a whole bunch of cultures. Just but I'm, one whole. I'm, I'm yeah. concerned about one in particular. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I'm but yeah, you know, a whole bunch of cultures. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Farrakhan, <laughs> but no, I, and I, I think the uh, I almost want to know when when the term first started being used, and that's something I probably could have looked up. But I think that at some point it was it was somebody's idea of inclusion, and now it just doesn't really seem to make sense to me. I mean, if you feel like, I mean, it's like because when you say people of color, that's almost to make it seem like we all, like you said, had the same values, the same culture. 
Um, I mean, we don't even have the same language. So yeah. first of all, if people ain't got the same language, you definitely can't put them in the mm-hmm. same group because we can't even communicate. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even know how you do that. And I, I guess it's something, and I ain't going to lie to you, though. And this is, it kind of it kind of hurts my heart to say this, though, but I'm I'm pretty sure probably some black person came up with this term. I'm just I saying. Mean, <laughs> I'm just sure. It, it was I mean, probably I mean, some black person that came up with color. Not all, you know, skin folk, skin folk, right? <laughs> no, you know, that's like, true. I mean, look at the attorney, attorney general in uh, uh, Kentucky. Oh, man, that let's, that brother in a sucking place for real. Let's let's real you know? quick though. Let's real quick touch on that, man, because um, we we because we have to. Um, there has yet to be justice for Brianna, and even the the small gesture. Of justice wasn't for her, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like if you're familiar with the story, maybe this is calm these niggas down a little bit out here. That's and it kind of yeah. really wasn't that because it was still yeah. a slap in the face it still because was. it didn't have anything to it do with her. her. True, yeah, so true. it was still yeah. like a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. And for again, I know that you know it's a it's a gift and a curse being a uh, being a, a black, especially male, in a in a position like that. Right. But at the end of the day, though, I mean, have some have some pride in your culture. Have some pride in your who you are, because it's just if you fight, if you fight a losing battle, I respect that. But if you're not even fighting the battle, I was about to say, you know, I can't fuck with you. I, I might even have fuck with him, and like if he came out and just like, hey, this ain't right. Yeah, 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 you know, whatever. This motherfucker's on Fox News with Tucker Carlson defending himself and shit, right? Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Who you know who watch Fox News? Right. You know who you talking to right now? Exactly. Come on now. You're defending yourself uh, to people that. That you don't even matter. That to don't the first fuck with place. you exactly. Right. Yeah, that's that's the thing. And I was yeah. I'm so disappointed and I, I, I well I guess I'm disappointed. I guess what did I expect though, I guess. Right? I mean I I am disappointed though. I I'm disappointed in the whole the whole municipal, the whole judicial, the whole system in, in, in <laughs> Kentucky. Um a, along with, you know, everywhere else in America. But right now <laughs> our focus is on Kentucky and I think that they have failed the people. Well at least the people that matter to me, I guess I so, say. You, you know, I think about that dude, man, and I might be jumping into this early, but <laughs> fucking jump in there. I, <laughs> some shit. Hey, right. um, I think about back to like our, our college football days. You know, those team meetings and those team functions and shit like that, and hearing everything about team, the team, teamwork and oh, shit. Are we there? Okay, all right, we there. All right, you I know, got you. I got you. I'm just wondering, like, why? Like, I look back on that now, especially as I've been a coach for some years now, right? Exactly. And I do see the importance of teamwork. I'm not saying that teamwork doesn't matter, Mm -hmm. right? I'm just saying it was almost like a... Like a a brainwashing, you know what I mean? You lose your You get indoctrinated, you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. You lose who you are. Yeah. I mean, and then I think about this brother down in Kentucky, Mm -hmm. like... Is that is that what society is trying to do to us? Make us end up like that, bro? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it, 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 is that their... When they think about a black person, is that what they want black people to be? You know what I mean? <laughs> is, that Honestly, a, is that a question? or I mean, it's, it's, it's rhetorical. I was going to say, you know, if it's yeah. a real question, the answer is yes. <laughs> I mean, it's rhetorical. <laughs> but, like... The answer is yes. You put all that shit together, and, like, it's starting really, start to make sense. You yeah. know, some shit, right? Just mm-hmm. conform, 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 conform. And... It's, it's crazy that I that that it's even crosses my mind now because I spent time in one of the ultimate organizations when it comes to conforming, you know, the military <laughs> and shit, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, facts. So maybe being to that extreme of it made me realize just how important it is still to have some individuality Man. and to look out for yourself. Exactly. You know, rather than always putting something over yourself. Sometimes you yeah. sometimes you gotta take care of yourself, man. You know, shit. people yeah, say the greater right. good and this and that. Like, sometimes you just got to be like, fuck all the rest of them people. I need to take care of me. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, because that's another term that's prominent right now, and that's self-care. That's for real, because you spend too much time trying to conform or trying to look out to the best benefits of others. You forget about yourself. Right. And if you're not able to perform, then how are you ever supposed to perform for somebody else? Now, his his situation, you know, when it comes to politics and and. And, and law enforcement. Po- politics is one thing, but this, bro, I mean, like that. Yeah, yeah I, I know, right? I, am I trying? To, I'm trying. Yeah, to, I'm yeah. Trying to offer him a rope. Yeah, you trying? You trying? Yeah, trying. trying? I ain't gonna lie. I, I always try to look out for 
for us. But a lot of us don't don't deserve to be looked out for, and I I don't know what his I don't know what his situation is or like you know his his background or what he had to go through to get to his position. But at the end of the day, man, I I understand that doing what's right for ourselves and our community is not always gonna have a valiant outcome. No, you know what I'm saying. We're and too I, worried about the optics, man. And I think that once you get to that position. You gotta throw that shit out mm -hmm. the window. You yeah. got you can't be worried about what people think about you or if you're doing this because you're black. Because guess what, dog? I, I'm gonna be honest with you. We've been on this earth long enough to know that some shit I'm doing, yes, and it's just for us. Like I, I it just fucking is. I'm like I'm not trying that to cover right. it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. Like yes, I'm doing it because we're black and mm -hmm. I need black people to do such and such. You know, that's damn right. Yes. And, and I think that's okay. And there's nothing. It's nothing wrong. White with folks been doing it for uh, forever. Thank you. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. I was getting ready to say, man. Forever. Like, that's the thing and, and not that not that the way they do things are right and we want to do things their way but in order to survive in the system that they've you created for your own. you got to yeah. i mean you honestly got to and i think that even because he probably in a position where his hands was tied this was gonna go that way either way maybe i'm just saying but i'm just saying i'm you trying know, to keep an open mind right and that's all i'm doing so i'm thinking that maybe his efforts would have got thwarted anyway mm -hmm. but you need to at least be vocal enough to let me know that you were fighting. Mm -hmm. Or, at least, I mean, dog. At the end of the day, at least point fake me. Let me feel like <laughs> you, you was trying, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause now I'm looking at him like you motherfucker. How could you let this happen, dog? And I, I'm gonna tell you a story real quick too. Speaking of Kentucky, we gonna get off of Kentucky. But uh, when we went to uh, Tennessee last week, and uh, like we made a <laughs> we made a clear cut effort to stop in Cincinnati. And get gas so we could skip through Kentucky. Like we mm -hmm. didn't even want to stop in that motherfucker because I ain't. I just didn't want to stop because yeah, that yeah. was the same weekend that the whole you know yeah. uh, uh, the, the shit mm -hmm. happened with the uh, you know with the one police officer. So I'm like, all right, bet we go skip through there. On the way back, however, we weren't so lucky. Right, <laughs> the oil light came on or some dumb shit. Somebody had to take a piss, so we had to stop in Kentucky. So we stopped and like. This wasn't nowhere near Louisville or nowhere like even like city like. So this was kind of in the outskirts. Mm. And when I tell you that, and y'all stop. Yeah, we stopped because okay. we kind of had to. Okay. And like when I tell you that, and and I and I say this, but you was exercising your second amendment right though. I was. Yeah, okay. I was. Okay. And even though I felt like we probably would have went to jail for that too, but <laughs> I was I was willing to take that chance. Hey, better rather than that. Be, better yeah, to have it. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I, was, I was willing to take that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plus, because like we had kids with us and stuff. So right, like, right. you know, I, it's it's not it's not going down like that. Bro. Right. Right. Like, we go die trying. Right. Mm -hmm. So so this is my thing though, and and I. Let me see. I, I want to say this in, in all sincerity because sometimes I don't think you niggas be listening. It sounds good mm -hmm. when you talk about, you know, the slavery should have never happened again. they will never have us in chains until you feel racial oppression, though, like mm -hmm. intimidation, rather. I mean, racial intimidation. Like, dog, it's, it's nothing like being in a town where you know they don't want you. Mm -hmm. And they and it's obvious. It's blatant, <laughs> dog. I was like, you can say all the shit you want, but it's something that, that you just feel. And I'm like... You can be all the brave and all that shit, dog, but it's still a feeling. Like, you are. What my man Q say, oh, higher learning. We behind enemy, enemy oh, yeah. lines, dog. Enemy lines, dog. For yeah, real. Yeah, that, yeah. that was real shit. So we stopped mm. in Kentucky and it for real felt like that to the point where uh, my man's wife was like, uh, cut this shit short. Get your ass in the car. He he tried to smoke a cigarette. She's uh, like, no. Nah, bro. Put that one in this motherfucker and let's get the fuck on. That like, cigarette can wait. And my nigga, when I tell you that, we rolled that bitch out until we got mm -hmm. to Ohio. I believe that Like, shit. niggas had to piss and everything, but like, nope, we ain't doing it. Dog, I feel you, man. Because, like, that's just, and it's fucked up that I'm living in a society, and I don't want to get to the politics of it again, but we live in a society where we got to vote for the lesser of two evils for leaders who. You don't have uh, to. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, but who are allowing this to happen. Because, mm -hmm. like. And this is one thing, and 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 I, I hate as much as I hate to admit this, because I, I did listen to the debate, and and it was hard. It was hard to do, but it's one thing that uh, that Trump said that, that was true though. He was like, "You've been in politics for forty seven oh, yeah, years." That's and I you saw that. Get, that shit was funny. I'm, just like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Because if you've been in politics for 47 mm -hmm. years and you haven't been able to change none of this shit, how am I supposed to trust you now? That's that's the, some of the realest shit he ever yeah, said. Yeah, because I, I, mean, I mean, because change, positive change, does nothing for politicians' longevity. Right. 
Or the powers that be. Right? Or the powers that be. For sure. They have to make... Sh- they want the public to think like there's good. these problems out here. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. They got to make the public think that there's this pro- these problems out here. And hey, public, I'm going to come along and I'm going to fix these problems fix these for problems, you. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. If no problems exist, then yeah. you wouldn't even need Don't fucking need me. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Now, I said, uh, this is something I said to it. And again, for real, for real this time, we'll get off of uh, politics. But on the show last week, we had this conversation. Because I've been, uh, if you've been following me on social media, I've been saying a lot about not voting. And I'm actually thinking about writing something about that. We'll get into that later. But um, so we was having a conversation on the show. And Angry Man was like, uh, you know, I know it's I know it's bad, but he like, would you rather have you know Trump in there again, and know that he bringing like this whole aura of white supremacy, or would you rather have you know uh, Biden? So I was thinking like, to me, it's kind of like. If I don't vote, and that means that Trump get in, it's like this. Uh, how can I explain this shit? I really do feel like if Trump get in for a second for a second term, that is is really gonna be some shit. I think that um, people who are completely adamant about being like quote unquote race, racist will be even more so in a second term. I mm-hmm. think it'll be even more. But then I told him like, you know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing, dog. I was like, maybe. Maybe niggas need physical oppression in order to get that shit together and move forward. I, cause my thing is like, I think we've always discussed this: real change don't ever come come about without conflict and bloodshed. Maybe we gotta go to that shit. I'm I'm not saying that I'm completely prepared <laughs> for that shit, but like something need to happen for us to you, get going in the right direction. I tell you what, no, no one's ever really prepared for real conflict and bloodshed. No one. <laughs> right, exactly. I don't care what they say, who they say, blah blah blah, whatever. Like. You can't prepare yourself for that. That's like something you gotta grit and grind your way through. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah th- th- that shit though, man. Like, <laughs> it's a tough one. Like, I don't know. I I've always voted in my local elections, right? Mm-hmm. Me, you know, because I, I, I see that change happening in front of my face, right? Right. And in some cases, I even know the damn candidate. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, in some cases, local, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the whole the whole president thing, though, man. I, I, I can honestly slay, say uh, I'm I'm probably not going to vote yeah. for president, yeah. right? For, right for, for those reasons, because yeah, I'm definitely going because I know it's gonna be local yeah. shit on the ballot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I don't fuck with Trump, but like I don't, don't fuck, fuck with, with Biden either. You exactly. know, so I'm not gonna vote for somebody when I don't believe him in the first yeah. place. It's because I don't want another motherfucker in there, man. You know, like I, yeah. some people might be able to get down with that, and that's cool. That's your choice. I respect that. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not. All Simple right. as that. And if y'all mad about it, so what? Be fucking mad. <laughs> be mad. You know? Huh? Family, friends, whatever. Just and, be fucking mad. And I think, uh, what's my man name? Uh, damn. The uh, the Muslim cat. Uh, man, I can't think of his name. Riz, Riz, is, what is it? Rizla? Rizla? Riz, what's his name? God, I, I watch all this shit. But anyway, uh, forgive me for forgetting his name. I think it's Rizza or Riz, Riz, Riz something. It started with an R I Z something in there. But anyway, he was just saying how um, how voting ain't going ain't gonna ever really be important until we vote and put our resources behind a certain movement. And that's the that's the thing that's missing. So I feel like if those resources aren't there or like that pressure to make who's ever in office do what you need them to do, then what's really the point? Like, cause it, so let's say we do get Biden into the office. Um, we still need to make him do what we need him to do. Do we have that leverage yet? Uh, so if we ain't got that leverage, then I, I you know, so <laughs> right back to the book. <laughs> yeah. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the, in the cafeteria? No, nah, this is. So I want y'all to look at this. All right, so check out this book. Right, all right. So the question is, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Now, I have yet to read this book, but I'm uber excited. I said uber excited because this is something that we experienced at Adrian (laughs) College. And whether that be by design or by our own default, um, that's what it was. That was our self-defense mechanism. We had a black table. Because I I can remember it like it happened yesterday. I walk into that freaking cafeteria and I look around. And I know y'all, yeah. but I don't really know y'all yet, right? right. For sure, because we knew. So yeah, yeah, we knew. yeah. So I look around, and I just see like a sea of white faces, right? <laughs> right. 
And then like an ink blot in a bowl of milk. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. And I, gonna, I see people that look like me. They're going to people of color. Yeah. So <laughs> what table did I sit at? Right. The that table with, with the people of color. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> with yeah. the black folks, right? Mm. So, I mean, it, I mean, you, you... I think after a while, dude, like... You, you, you know how they say, like, like dogs are domesticated animals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know... They're used to certain conditions, so they act a certain way. Yeah. I think the same is true with people, and especially black people. You know, right? Yeah. It just for whatever reason, man, it, it's whenever we things don't normally turn out well when we're around white folks. <laughs> you know what I mean, look at history. His, I was gonna say history would say so. Definitely. History look at history. So. Things typically don't turn out well yeah. when black folks and white folks mix. True. So I mean, yeah, we stick it to our own. Yeah. You know. And I mean, we 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 in America, so they can't help but stick today on, you know. So. But look, just looking at looking at this book and thinking about our experience at Adrian College, though, this is to me the same concept, which I'm not sure all the concepts because I haven't read through it yet. But the, just from reading the uh, the cover, um, the same concept is what we kind of live by at Adrian College. And when we had situations, because we did have racial situations mm -hmm. on campus, um, a few different times, a few yeah. different times. Um, quote unquote people of color never came to our defense. <laughs> no. Nope. So how do we get to be lumped in one group when those those groups don't really fuck with us for real? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like in real life, when we had issues with uh with Alpha, which was our uh our black organization on, on campus and we had uh you know, we had just like little racial incidents happening, nobody was there to help us but us. And I right. and I and I'm not saying that I wanted anybody else's help, mm -hmm. but the fact that nobody else was there to help means that when when we come in, you can't put us in one group then. Right. You can't be in the same group and, if you're not fighting for me. And, so. the, and when administration did show up, it wasn't from a place of, you know, let me assist, let me help with this. It's discipline. let me make sure y'all ain't doing no shit that's fucked up it's around discipline. here. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Discipline. Yeah. Trying to, trying to show that you're an authority figure. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Exactly. And I mean, just the, the thing of it, too, is that um, when you're talking about, you know, I guess I don't want to stay too long on Adrian College. Because I I had I had a great experience at Adrian College. Because, because of us. Of Adrian College. Yeah, because, because of, of us. us. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I want to mention about Adrian College, though, is that, uh, and I mentioned Alpha, uh, which is the, uh, I can't remember. the African American leaders promoting higher achievement. There you go. Right. So this is the organization that was on campus for as long as I know. Like it's, yeah. it's an old organization, but mm -hmm. that's it. There's that's it. one yeah. organization. Nope. So that was our equivalent of a black student union, I yeah. guess you would say. But the times have changed, the the cultures have changed, but the organization never changed. <laughs> So we actually tried to do a new organization, <laughs> which we did get incorporated, but I'm not sure if we actually on the book still. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, most likely not. Who was that? Uh, Mike Gillian. Mike was Gillian. Yeah, yeah, Mike Gillian. Yeah. But uh, we we got that organized. So we actually had an organization on campus. Uh, it was called Black Dynasty, and really it was a uh, it was a it was a male it was a male organization, uh, which may have been sexist. <laughs> But um, I think that it needed is something that was necessary because Alpha had been so old and kind of manipulated by the administration. Yeah, that we just needed something that was just that us. Was ours. Yeah, yeah. and that's, yeah. that's all I wanted. Though. Yeah. And, and what's crazy now is I'm thinking about that shit now. I mean, that was 20 years ago, and we were ahead of our times. So yeah. even even thinking about that without administration being like nobody mm. in administration really being there to help us, you know, <clears throat> guide us through it. And no right. disrespect to. Uh, our, uh, you know, our, our uh, what, what we even call them? Like the black, the little, the black people that was working in administration that was kind of like on our side. No, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, shout yeah, out to them. Yeah, they, I guess they did. did what they needed to. I, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, they I tried. Think they the, tried. You the know? one that that I actually, uh, well, Danielle was cool. Um, Danielle, yeah, yeah, yeah Danielle, Danielle was, cool. was yeah. But uh, Cynthia was our last one, and Cynthia is probably the only one that I felt like actually like fought for us and did stuff. Like when she was there. Um, I remember we started we started going to uh, job fairs in Ohio, like just you know black students. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know she started like taking us places. Like we went to Ohio a few times. I, I realize now it's because she's from Ohio, so it was easier <laughs> for her to take us down there because she knew places. But we went down there several times to like uh, job events. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, like we even went out one weekend. I think 
Uh, one one weekend, I think they went down to uh, what's that? Missouri, Missouri University, of Missouri. I didn't get a chance to go. I didn't and that go might have been either. before you got there. I didn't go to that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but like yeah, they took uh, like a to see what campus was like down there. Like, okay. So so she did some things. I think that it was like like a. a like like the black college trip you take in high school. Exactly, just yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly, just like that. And mm-hmm. it, so so I really respect her for that. And I think that that dynamic is what's missing in like in the real world. Mm. Like we have groups, but then we don't have administration backing us. So then when we don't have administration backing us, when I say administration, I'm kind of speaking about government. Then we look for the government to push us, and then what happens with the government is they they do just enough to make them to get themselves a pat on the back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So their initiative is never to actually help. It's just to kind of make whatever they doing look good, and that's what <laughs> I'm gonna bring that all the way back. That's what voting feel like to me. Like I'm voting for you to make yourself look good, but you never actually doing nothing for me. And I think we talked about this off camera, and this is something that I think a lot of piss a lot of people off. And I apologize ahead of time, angry principal. But uh, <laughs> about voting is that I tell you that when I vote for a president. Things don't change locally, so I need to concentrate on my local stuff. And then I say, I don't want to vote for a president if my options are only going to be two of the less, you know, the lesser of the two evils. And then I say, I don't want to vote if, if either one of these candidates are presenting anything that, that is near and dear to my heart. So I say those three things, right? So then I ask somebody, like, so why should I vote, right? Now, we talked about this off mm-hmm. camera, and nobody can really tell you. So if I can give you three Yo, reasons why I don't want to vote. Shut up. Right, our ancestors, our ancestors did a lot of shit that you know was questionable. So I'm just, I'm just saying, and and this is something I said before too. And a lot of people probably won't agree with this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, I feel like if people back in the day would have known what democracy was gonna turn into, they never would have fought so hard for voting. I, think, I, I think, feel comfortable saying that. I don't think they, I don't think they'd have worked so hard if they'd have known that democracy wasn't gonna turn I, into shit. Anyway. I just think the situation was so different than mm-hmm. anything. Was, was better, better than, than what, what they were going through. For sure. Right? We're not in that situation now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't, I don't want to go off on the whole voting thing, man. I know, because we weren't talking about voting. Yeah, man. yeah. We were talking about voting. Right? <laughs> you know, it's just... Like Cube said, we need to make them work for our votes and we're not. Yeah. Right? Um, we've let politicians... Yes, it's, it's a right. But we've let, let politicians kind of shape it into us thinking like it's it's a duty, yeah. right? And right. I did, mean, they call it that. It's a right. duty. Yeah, they call and it then, that. Yeah. And, and then when you approach it like that and you think that, that ensures them like their place in, you know, and then whatever they want to be in, you know, whatever office they're in, I guess, yeah. right? But anyway. My, <laughs> I know, right? I, I only reason I'm going to vote for someone now is I'm, I'm, I'm being selfish, right? What are you going to do for me? Right. Right? If you, you can't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. You can't even do anything for, for black people. And right. you and if you can't come out and say that publicly without lumping a bunch of other groups in it, man, then I'm not voting for you. And Simple as that. That's what happened with, Simple that's what that. happened with me. And, uh, I'm not concerned about the Asians. I'm not concerned about the Hispanics. Yeah, good luck to them, and I wish them the best. Yeah. But I'm not concerned about that. Right. I'm concerned about me no, and my fault. Yeah, I don't wish them no ill will. No, no, yeah. no. I just, I that, that's I not my concern. Right, I don't care. <laughs> you know? right. I don't care. I want ours to be good. Right, yeah. And this is my, that's what turned me off about uh, Cory Booker. And we're not going to talk about voting anymore. But I'm just saying, when he first came out, because he was doing his shit out in Jersey. I'm like, all right. He going to be, like, he might be straight. But then when he got on his platform and started backpedaling, I knew then, this it's not going to work for us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going to ever get somebody that's going to be like 100%. I don't know. Yeah, because we so tied up and thinking that everything needs to be absolute. Yeah. I don't, I don't look, know what it is. Look at people. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Right. Like, we... We are contributing members to society, right? But we do some dumb shit sometimes as we <laughs> people, right? <laughs> right. I mean, it's like your politics, yeah. Right. <laughs> but that doesn't make that doesn't mean that like you or me or whoever wouldn't make a good politician or something like right. that. Like, yeah, granted, when they when they go out and do some like reckless shit, like okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, right. But uh, it's just I don't know, man. We we, we we've got it into our heads that it's got to be this super intelligent, blah blah blah, whatever, perfect candidate, you know. Right. It ain't got to be that, man. For real. It's gotta it ain't got to be perfect, but it's got to be something for me. Yeah. 
Well, you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. just like business, though. All right. they call I, ain't, I ain't talking about voting no more. With them. What's in it for me? Yeah. All right, so we over that shit. People of color, though. We back to that. First of all, let me pour another drink, though, because this shit is actually good, though. First of all, I, I want to let y'all know, though, for real, People that of color. I'm really excited about having a scotch that I like because I didn't think scotch would ever be my thing. But this one's actually pretty good. And if you are, I guess it depends on um, what you like. And I and I and I say that loosely though because this is normally not something I like, but because there's like some hints of vanilla in it uh, that makes it a little bit sweeter. And on the end, uh, it's it's kind of it's dry, so it doesn't really leave like a lot of burning sensation. I think for that reason, I think this is good for me uh, because I do like a lot of uh, you know softer whiskeys and bourbons, kind of with a sweeter vanilla or maybe cocoa kind of touch to it and i think this kind of falls into that that category and which is a uh, maybe it's contributed to it being uh put into a caribbean cask maybe that is what kind of smooths it out i'm could not be. sure because because yeah. some get, other scotches it could mellow it out a little bit because <laughs> it don't have that that bite that some scotches can have like, like, like that, ooh, that cut it, that cutting <laughs> sark bite well they, 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 that's that's a blended one too though so it's <laughs> not a single ball but rough, yeah <laughs> Cutty soccer, bro. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this though: mm -hmm. college football. Yep. Middle age to old white coaches mm -hmm. coaching young black men. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think about? What's your thoughts on that? I'm just like, I mean, it, obviously, you know, it, it, it's I mean, cool. It, you know, it gotta, it gotta happen. <laughs> yeah, it gotta happen. <laughs> but I'm like, what, what, what's your thoughts on as far as like the whole? You know, team before itself and conformity and, and no and no individuality and right. all that type of stuff, you know? Um, all right, so let, let's look at it from uh, two ways. Let's look at it from me being a fan of football, and then we look at it as actual experience in, in, in school. So let's go all the way back to uh, to high school, and this is only really the really only way I can kind of put it into perspective. Um, in high school, we had coaches, uh, and I was, I was blessed to – uh, go to King High School, the best high school football program in the state of Michigan. Um, <laughs> but I, I was blessed to go there and have individual coaches. Like, we actually had position coaches, which if you've been in the inner city, you you know that the coaching is, is, is short in, in the inner city, and it's not always position coaches. Anyway, so I said all that to say this. I thought that we had a great group of coaches. We had a, a lot of different position coaches and the people who had, you know, played the game and were, you know, were well knowledge, well versed on the game. And then it was when I got to college that I realized that even then there were some shortcomings in coaching. But those shortcomings came from um I, I won't say lack of knowledge, but kind of a lack of uh how to connect. How to connect, right? But then I, I noticed that I, I needed that connection more so than the kind of structure that I got in college. Mm -hmm. So in college, what was missing was that what I thought was a lack of connection and shit was actually more connected than I've ever done with any other coaches. And I think that's a, that is a black and white thing. Like, cause I, obviously we had all white coaches at Adrian, but I think that a white coach who is familiar with black culture can and knows how to connect with us. A lot of them just, just don't. And I don't know if it, it's because they don't have the experience or they just don't care to. Um, so I, I'll say this, and I, I think I, I'm, I'm free to speak candidly, but uh, like Coach Duff and uh, Coach Lyle at, uh, at Adrian College, and, and maybe I'm only speaking that because those are the coaches I came in most contact with, um, but those two coaches, uh, no matter what you may think of, uh, <laughs> of Coach Duff sometimes or Coach Lyle sometimes, I think that they, they actually figured out a way to connect with, you know, with black players. Um, did that translate to um, on the field or in practice coaching? I don't think all the time. So I, I think they learned how to connect with us, but it didn't always translate into coaching. Right. If that if that makes sense. So I think that if if they were able to kind of better put that into the terms of coaching, which means that that some things in practice and some things in games have to change. You know what I'm saying? Because you do have to adapt to who your who your players who your people are. are yeah, right. Exactly. And, because especially at a, at a D3 level, maybe is a little different because it's almost like, and I hate to say it like this, but it's almost like the, you know, everybody on the team needs to play type of thing or, you know, <laughs> everybody gets a participation trophy type shit. <laughs> but in real life, though, I feel like whatever level you're playing at, 
whoever whoever is is the best needs to be on the field. Whether that yeah. means is a freshman over a senior or whatever and shit, right? But I don't think in predominantly white schools or or schools where uh, white coaches don't deal with a lot of uh, black uh, players. I think that that's kind of lost because I, I we didn't been in situations like even at, at King and shit where it's normally highly unlikely for you to you know test the field as a freshman. But sometimes players come in they just really that good. Yeah, so you have to sit motherfuckers down. Yeah, but I don't think that in, in college I don't think white coaches connect with black coaches on that level at, at predominantly white schools. I say that because, like, you, you it, it depends on the level, right? Yeah, you know, so, you know, it's definitely, yeah, it's like, they so. It's definitely a different D1, D2, <laughs> yeah, D3, NAIA, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's definitely yeah. A, a difference there. Um, now, see, you, you know, you've been, you've been I, on both sides. Yeah, I was just, yeah. yeah, I'm about to get into that a little bit, yeah. you know. I've been on black staffs, been on white staffs, been on mixed staffs, and then you've been on like team, that. and then hey, right. And I'm thinking about like the one I'm on currently. Okay. And it, it, it it's definitely missing that connection. Okay. You know, there's myself and then two other black black gentlemen on you know on on this coaching staff. Okay. And those are our best performing position groups, <laughs> <laughs> which should let you know something. I'm. They kind of connect with the players a little bit yeah. better, you know what I mean? Things like that. And I, that old school belief of, of football, you know, like back to the Junction Boys days and shit like that, right? <laughs> that old school belief, you know, like we got coaches. Coaches focus on the wrong things sometimes, you know. Yeah. They, they they say they're stressing the little things. No, what you what you're doing is being nitpicky about dumb shit, yeah. you know. Coach kids on shit that, that matters. Yeah. You know, when a kid comes off a field and he's got his helmet, he's holding his helmet in his hand, that, that's not something to yell at a kid about because he doesn't have his fucking helmet on. Yeah. You know, it, it's fucking 2020. It, it's not 1960 anymore. <laughs> Things have changed. Right. You know, I and you. I think a lot of a lot of that, you know, so just they haven't made. So that, that's not. They, they, they got, they've got to take that step. They've got to. Sh- they've got to have to shift their own paradigms right. to realize that, right? Now that's not always a black and white thing, though, right? That's kind of generational. It's thing. not always. A, yeah, sometimes it's, it's an age thing. Like, you know, what I'm saying it can be an age yeah. thing. It, it, it can be, yeah. but not always, not man. You'd always. be surprised. <laughs> like, there, there's a lot of young coaches out here that have been brought up by some older coaches and things so like that, the same and they still like, yes, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your philosophy, just like your X's and O's, need to adapt. Yeah, you can't keep the, the same the game philosophy. Has yeah, the game has changed. It, not only the, the, the people kids change. change. Yeah, but man, the kids change. The people have changed. Yes, you know, definitely. So you can't go about it the same way anymore, right? right. You know, you can't. It, it's, it's not direct. It, it's really a partnership now. Yeah. It's not direct. If it's not top down like it used to be. Yeah. You know, I'm sure some. You know, there, there are programs that are run like that, of course. Yeah. You know, but you, you, easy to do when you're winning. Yeah, when, when winning. But when you see your successful <laughs> programs, like. You know, yeah, they talk about teamwork. They talk about that. But you know what they got? They got a lot of dog-ass motherfuckers on the field that's making plays and shit, you know? Dog-ass individuals. Yeah, so you got some dog- yeah. And, and, and you got coaches that is that are promoting their individuality yeah. because that's part of their game now. You so, know, that makes kids play better. So this is kind of the same thing, though, right? So this is just like being an individual exactly. and people, people of color, right? So I think it's, it's always important to, to note the individuality. Because when you don't, then everybody get lumped into one group, like people of color, and then you kind of you lose momentum. And I think that's kind of the same thing. You lose the right dynamicness of, of the group. Yeah. When you make everybody conform, you lose how dynamic the group yeah. can be, right? Exactly. When you let people be dynamic in their own spaces and whatnot, you have then you have a high functioning group. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. Mm-hmm. So how do you? Yeah. How, I guess this is a good question. I, I think because it just formulated in my head, so I think everything I ask is a good question. But uh, if you if you make everybody conform. How do you ever get a leader? And how do you ever have momentum without a leader? The leader is the the most the, outspoken person that's <laughs> shooting your message, I guess. Right. You know? <laughs> right. like, yeah, you know? should just say goofy to me, though, right? So if you yeah. get everybody marching the same direction and everybody's no individuality, like how do you get a leader? Mm-hmm. Like, and it, without a leader, I, I don't give a fuck what you say. Without a leader, shit just you not going to happen. You know, you know like, so my whole point, man, is mm-hmm. this sometimes I think the. In, the creativeness, the individuality, you know, things like that are bred out of some of our younger kids you know, that yeah. participate in sports that are primarily 
coached by white folks sometimes, yeah, yeah. right? For sure. You know, because they look at that as a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, and don't, he's don't showboating. Me, he's, no, that's just part of his personality. <laughs> don't get me wrong, you know? though. Some of these black coaches suck, too, though. Was, no, <laughs> don't, don't get it wrong. But, but you know what? Like, we don't have to qualify that, though. You know what I mean? Because, like, everybody knows that there's going to be good and there's going to be bad. We know that. Period. Yeah. Period. I'm more willing to take the bad from somebody that looks like me yeah. than somebody that doesn't look like me. That's just how I am, whether it's <laughs> right. wrong or right. We know. Right? You know? <laughs> we know. <laughs> you know? I can, I can deal with the bad then, right? Yeah. But don't, don't come from a place where you, you have no idea what my background, how I function as a person, or anything yeah. like that. And then try to correct me, you know, right. things like that, or, or or try to coach me, or try to do whatever. Yeah. Whether it's on the football field, corporate America, classroom, whatever. Like that's that's where things have changed, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, then you know we were brought up, to shut the fuck up in class and listen. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Now you know you you, you it's, it's a good thing when you challenge the teacher yeah, or the professor sure. or whatnot. Because yeah. now, because you, you're, you're just not accepting everything they're feeding you. you know what I mean? Man, look, this is a this is a great example. You uh, you be you watch Power? This new one. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the newest episode. You know what I'm no. Well, I think this was a couple episodes back. This was when uh, Tariq was in class and he challenged the professor. About, but he got to finish reading the damn book, though. Yeah, Tariq. he do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, he, but he did but challenge yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and, and in real life. Like, dude, just like you said, was so stuck on how things used to be done and his old ideology that, like, this shit, he challenged him. But, like, at the end of the day, he had to really take that shit in. Like, damn, he might he have might a point. might be right. Yeah, exactly. No, and that's, I think that's exactly what happened with us. A lot of times we are, I don't know if society does it or we do it to ourselves, but we are fearful of, of being that person that challenges. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think the, the whole the whole thing about it is, and we talk about a lot of shit on this show that, that challenges the norm. And sometimes, sometimes I'm afraid because I know that we, we are, uh, you know, this is the internet age. And when we put stuff out, it, it's, it's out there. Yeah. So whatever I say is, is there. It's there. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> it's there. And I do think about that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then I, I, I don't let that fear stop me from saying what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, <laughs> I didn't want to go back to Kentucky, but I think that's what happened with, uh, you know, the attorney general down there. It's like, he got to a point where the fear made him not say what needed to be said. And, and that's something that, uh, that's something that we definitely got to get past. And I think that having this conversation about this whole term, people of color, is something that needed to be said. But for whatever reason, it seems like a lot of people not talking about this. Mm. And I don't know why, because it really is a thing. And I don't want to, you know, I want to beat the dead it, horse and shit saying that, like, you know, it's an issue and, and you know, we got a problem with though. it. Huh? Some of that's on us, though. I mean, yeah, some you, of it you is. Know, you know, how, when we be like, oh, my Hispanic brothers and sisters and stuff. But they not. Uh, they not really. What? You're reaching but, out to a totally different group before you reach out to your own folks. I don't right? know they struggle. Yeah, I mean, and they and, and they don't we know got our ours. we got our own problems. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I'm sure y'all got problems. You know, I mean, y'all go ahead and work that out. Okay, <laughs> but it's our movement. Okay, you can start your own. You know, but 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 no, you can't come with us. <laughs> that's cool. Y'all got your own shit. You know, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy though. I. This is a conversation, like, we had so many uh, different ideas for topics today, and this is one that I, it was like one of the last ones, because I, I think I picked something else, and then he came out with that, and I'm like, damn, that is a good one. Then we brought this book, I was like, it even it made even more sense, only because I was able to equate this whole idea of all of us sitting at the table together at Adrian College, this is a personal experience, so I knew what that's like, and I knew about how we experience things at college, and None of these other, you know, uh, quote unquote, people of color came to our defense or was willing to, you know, fight our battle. So I think that shows you right then that you can't really be lumped into the same group if everybody in the group not willing to, you know, lack of a better word, die for what you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that, yeah. that was a good point. Um, yeah. I, the other thing is that you always think about the one episode of The Fresh Prince mm. when, um, uh, Will and Carlton go to try to join this fraternity. Ah, and yeah, they yeah, all about yeah, Will getting in, you know. Yeah, yeah. And dude's like, nah, Carlton, mm -mm, you, you know what I mean? They yeah. wouldn't want to fuck with Carlton because of how he acts, right? Yeah, so exactly. I will say this, right? Yes. <laughs> you, we got to be nice to our weird cousins, bro. Like like, like, like Ryan Davis, that comedian said? Yeah. You got to be nice to your weird cousins. Yo, that's real shit, though, for real. You know, like, they in the struggle, too. They may not 
act like you or be as cool or whatever, whatever you want to call it. But like they going through the same shit. But I believe that a million percent though, which is why <laughs> I had to stop doing it though. But which is why, um, you know, essentially at the beginning, I used to try to understand where mm-hmm. Kansas Owens was coming from. Well, let's see, that's. I'm just saying, that's, it's, I mean, different. That's, that, yeah, it's yes, different. that's totally different. It's different, but it's just kind of... No, it's not. I'm trying to see where she came from, but I mean, I'm, I'm over it now. But I'm just saying, originally, yeah, I tried to see because, like, she could she like that weird... She could be but, that weird but, cousin. But here's the difference, though. Like, yeah, Carlton's obviously that, that, that weird cousin, right? <laughs> right. But he... he and and, and, and nowhere, nowhere did you ever think that he doubted he who he was, yeah, right? No he knew he was a black man, right? Yeah, no doubt. Whereas Candace Owens, you're like... Does she even know what the fuck she told me? What? Yeah, you know she what I mean? confusing me, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, so I, I think that's the difference, that's right? That's a little bit different. Yeah, I guess you're right. I, Carlton I, had no self-hate. No, nah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so that's the difference, yeah. I feel you. I still gave her the benefit of the doubt, though. I did. I you're tried. saying that because she's pretty and shit. I mean, she is pretty. She's fine. She's she nice. She yeah. she nice. But I really was trying to figure out, though, for real. Like, I really was. Like, I, I did the same thing with Amarosa, too. Like, I was trying to figure out, like, maybe she had, like, a for real... Agenda when she was fucking. I think it was all about it's dollar all about signs with her. Yeah, sure. yeah. And Candace Owens too, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, most likely. Yeah. 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 Her, her and Tommy Lauren like the same person, just with different skin okay. <laughs> Tommy Lauren, what the fuck? Anyway, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I think uh, shit. We we go round it off in a minute. I want to get back to uh, this Belvini though. Um, again, softer notes, somewhat like vanilla a little bit. Um, it does end. It does end a little bitter, but it's quick though. So it kind of it kind of settles in the back of the palate, mm-hmm. and it kind of disappears. So it's not real bad. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't had scotch before, like like I said, if you go back to our season one, I know Buchanan's was one. I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, uh what was it? Um, Glenn Fittich. <laughs> yes, Glenn, Glenn Fittich. Fittich and uh and uh Buchanan's is what we had before. I wasn't really a fan of those. A lot more harsh than this. Um, if you do have a softer palate like like myself, and you like a, a, a softer whiskey or a lighter bourbon, uh, this is going to be the closer thing to it because of the, kind of the sweetness and it kind of disappears in the back. So if you want to try scotch, I would actually recommend uh, trying this first, and you might ease yourself into scotch. But if you you know if you like some of the harsher stuff, um, then you, you might want to go the Glenfiddich route or uh, or Buchanan's. But for a scotch, for me. Um, this definitely gets my vote. Like if I was to ever buy scotch again, it would definitely be this. I've I've had some other recommendations, um, but I think this is the first one that I've actually tried myself that I actually like. I would buy it myself. Yeah, I think you first have to decide if you want to try a single malt versus you know a, a Blend. blended uh, whiskey or a scotch. True. Um, but yeah, the first time I heard I, I had this, I was. I was pretty impressed, right? Uh, obviously the taste, but mm-hmm. I was really impressed that it didn't have that bite that a lot of scotches have. You yeah. know, like I like that sometimes, but sometimes I just want something mellow. Yeah, you know, so um, I can actually sit. Yeah, yeah. Without cringing, <laughs> <laughs> like how I was cringing at the debate the other day. <laughs> oh anyway. man. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's, it's definitely a, a good single malt. I like it. Um, yeah. Some other good single malts. Try Oban. You get a chance. Oban. Y'all get a chance to try Oban. Try that. O B A N. Oban. It's good stuff right yeah, there too. I've definitely yeah. heard of it for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was somebody coming in. Um. Now, just uh, circling back to what we were talking about today, people of color, and we go. Go ahead and end out the show with that. Um, I know you, you said that you first heard it uh, or pretty much paid attention to it in the military. Um, kind of got upset about how it was kind of lumping people together. I got that same ide- ideology now. It took me a lot longer to get to that point because I guess I just disregarded it like altogether. Mm-hmm. But now with everything that's going on, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement and the things that we're trying to get accomplished in, within our own culture, um, I think because of that, I started noticing it now. And it, it is... Uh, it does anger me a little bit because it, it seems like anything that we try to make a movement on um, is kind of deterred by having to share that uh, with other causes that don't even align, other causes or cultures or people themselves that mm-hmm. don't align with us at all. So I think it kind of angers me now. I guess the what I want to kind of end out on today is, and I, I think I, I mentioned this earlier, and I don't think we actually have an answer for this, but um, like, what, what do we do with the term you know, moving forward? I think we already agreed that most. I've never really heard black people say it. <laughs> like this is no. kind of a corporate term. I yeah. Think. 
But uh, I, I never really seen black people really like embrace it. I try not to acknowledge it, but when I hear it, you know, when I, and usually I'm at work when I hear it, Definitely. I do call it out. Like I don't like that term, y'all. Yeah. Folks are like, "Oh, Carl, blah, blah, blah. right?" You know, and I go and say it. You know, then then for a minute, you know, they, they get scared to say anything there for a minute, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, do uh, they understand though? Do they really understand? I don't think so. I mean, how hard is that to fucking understand though? I mean, you would have to be like be, you have to be in black. our skin <laughs> to really so. understand. You know, I guess so, man. that's crazy. So, what, what but you got to be willing to listen. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some folks don't even want to fucking listen. You yeah, know what I mean? True. Uh, some of us, you know, want to tell a story to you. You know, I don't necessarily. <laughs> you know, he might. You know, be a little friendlier than I am. A little bit. But um, yeah, I don't necessarily. Give a shit if you understand or not, really. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> shit. Why we can't all just get along and say never been in your vocabulary? So. I, I'm not trying to I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be un, unfriendly to anyone. I'm just saying yeah. I'm just letting them know where I stand. For sure. I don't care what y'all think. I feel <laughs> you know? So moving forward though, you just gotta kinda keep it out your vocabulary and check yeah, it when it comes for up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. whenever I hear it, I try to and, and, and you know, if someone feels the opposite way, I, I do try to listen, try yeah. to see where they're coming from, you know yeah. what I mean? Maybe it's something that I don't know, maybe it's something I can learn, who knows? But I do I do address it when I hear it, for yeah. sure. I mean it's a blanket statement. Nobody wants to be in a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause again, I think or maybe the, or maybe that's just us. Maybe I'd rather someone maybe, just refer to me as a black man. I know, well, right? What's I'm wrong black with man. that? Let's say that. What's wrong with you know, that, right? African American, if it makes you feel better, okay. Yeah, black go people. with that. What's yeah. wrong with that? Like, I, I, and maybe, again, like we was talking about culture and football, maybe, I mean, is it is it our need to to be individuals that force us to think like that? It might be. I mean, who, I mean, that's. I'm starting yeah, to feel like we, other people don't have a desire to be individuals. I, I, I don't even think it's a desire to be oh, individuals. Yeah. I just think yeah. we're naturally like a outgoing like creative type of people you know yeah. you know you just have those charismatic you know boisterous whatever you know personalities you yeah. know what i mean Thanks. um which you know uh, which a lot of us playing football you know a lot of us had that you know some of us didn't you know like me i just kind of kept to myself but then we had some ballers that you know they was out there yeah. and yeah. They, they wasn't trying to draw no attention to themselves that's just yeah. who they are right yeah. true yeah I don't know. That's a. It's definitely a couple of ways to look at it. I, I think the again the, the term. I think at this point, um, I again I don't want to be uh, confrontational on people, but it like I don't understand how you wouldn't understand why it's not a good term. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like so, you said that you would possibly would listen if people had like you know an alternative view. I'm not sure exactly what can be said that would make sense to me. Like I, I'm not saying color, anything would right, you know? but you would listen. Yeah. <laughs> You give him the fake hand. Give him the fake hand. No, no, no. It, it ain't fake. You know, like you know, I'm willing to listen. Like I, I'll, I will have a discussion yeah. with anybody on on any topic, right? Yeah. And I'll be willing to have a discussion, right? Yeah. And but if it's some dumb shit that come out your mouth, <laughs> I'm gonna call it dumb shit. Right. You know, dumb shit is dumb shit. Yeah. For sure. So I think moving forward, I think what what I am gonna do differently though, um, because again, I, I haven't. I've kind of disassociated myself with, uh, you know, with corporate America. So I haven't really had that, uh, you know, that confrontation with the term. But I think moving forward, though, I think I, I am going to be more proactive uh, like you have at pointing it out when people say it. Because mm. I, I hadn't been because, again, I just really yeah, hadn't given really, it much yeah, thought. Yeah. But now I think it's starting to be more important that, that we understand the, the difference. And, again, no disrespect to other people, in, you know, with, with, uh, with melanin. But I, I would like to concentrate on our individual, you know, focus. And if that means calling people out when they try to lump us all together, mm -hmm. again, there's no disrespect to your struggle because your struggle not mine. Mm -hmm. So I can only talk about, you know, ours, you know, as a, as a black person, not a person of color, but a black person. Because, like, person of color ain't on the application. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. your, all your races and stuff is on the application. It don't say person of color and white. You know what I'm saying? So, like, don't lump me together when we're talking about things that are important to us. And I think that's really about all I got to say about that. What I do want to say, though, is that this Balvini is some great shit right here, though. This is a good scotch. He's drunk. He's getting drunk. That's getting a buzz. That's yeah, what getting, it is. I'm definitely getting the buzz. He's getting the buzz. That's what it is. Because we're halfway through the fifth. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we go go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I did want to say this, though. I know we talk, a lot of, we talk a lot of shit about politics, a lot of shit about voting, a lot of shit about, you know, things in general. A lot of shit about everything. About everything. And. We always talk about it, you know, from our perspective. And if that offends anyone. Engage I, us. 
Oh, I was kind of going to say I don't give a fuck. No, okay, engages, I mean, though. engages, though. Nah, seriously, though. Like, anything that we say, because I ain't going to lie. Sometimes we say some controversial shit. Yeah. And this is your opportunity to put anything that you want to right down here in the YouTube comments and tell us what you would like to say. Uh, tell us uh, what you don't agree with. Tell us what you do agree with. I ain't going to lie to you, though. I would honestly, <laughs> I, I guess it's a weird person to me. I would honestly rather hear the ones that don't agree. Like because I want to see other perspectives. So like I, for me like when I when we load videos, I want some dislike buttons. I want some dislike. Uh, I want some thumbs downs, and I want some comments that say like, "Hey, why you say this?" Because I want a, a opportunity to engage. Because yeah. people who like if they like you, they like all right, hit the like button, and they yeah. agree with everything you're saying. Then that's cool. Like it's cool. But I want to, you know, a little confrontation. You feel me? Not confrontation, but opposition. I guess I call it opposition because I. I Otherwise, I'm gonna think that everything I'm saying is right, and I'm gonna keep saying that shit. So don't don't that. we think that anyway? As we people, think, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as people, we think that though, right? We think that anyway. Everything buddy. we believe is right. Yeah, that's hey, you gotta hit me with the Bill Cosby though. Hey. Challenge, <laughs> challenge me, shit. I want to know. That's the only way you can learn. Make sure you do check out this book though. This is Doctor Beverly Tatum. All right, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Check this out. Book. Because I'm getting ready to read this joint, and it's if you've book. ever been to a PWI, which is a predominantly white institute, mm -hmm. institution, rather, um, then you know that we have all sat together in the cafeteria before. <laughs> and even at jobs. Some of these uh, corporate America jobs, the same thing. So it's definitely a thing. It's not like something still that I made do. up. So Carl, still you didn't that. come to the to, to, to the happy hour yesterday. What happened? <laughs> like, I, I don't fuck with I don't fuck with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Yo. That's always like the topic of my one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Girl, you don't show up at any of the social events. Yes, I don't, I don't like fuck with y'all. Like, I, mean, I don't know how many times I got to tell you that. You know, jeez. <laughs> right, man. All right, so look. On that note, man, going out. Man, um, what would you say, Doug? Final sentiments. Also, I'm, we got to give a rating too because we forgot to do that last week. I'm gonna say this, Proud Boys. Oh man, come holler at me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't stop making guns and ammo when they made yours. You feel know I me? Mean? <laughs> it's like they on the internet talking shit. So I mean, like, yeah, come holler at us because they're fearless leader. Come holler at us. It's adding gasoline to the fire. Yeah, come holler at us. <laughs> I don't think you want to, but you more than welcome to. Oh, uh, that's definitely gonna be a sound bite. We definitely load that as a clip. <laughs> come holler at us. <laughs> what you say? What's your final rating on the Balvin? Man, Oh. Uh, <laughs> The Balvenie. Out of, out of five, I really, black yeah, power fist. yeah. I've, I've liked it for a while. It's not my first time having it. Obviously, I give it four solid black power fists, baby. Ooh, yeah. four, four. Damn, I like okay. it, man. Yeah, it's oh, one of my, yeah. it's one of my favorites. I wasn't expecting four. All right, he gave it that good four. All right, well, my uh, last sentiments on the way out and shit is, uh, I do, uh, I do actually, uh, I second that emotion. Uh, <laughs> proud boys. Uh, you know, I, I real quick, I posted something about, you know, what uh Trump said the other day and, and I guess uh somebody that's on my friends list, uh so is a white lady, said something about something. And like I, I ain't gonna lie, I half ass read it, but it was something to the degree of like the Proud Boys not being who I was making them out to be kind of thing. And before I even got upset, I just laughed and shit. And I and I didn't even read no more of the shit. I just kept it moving. Because, like, <laughs> at some point, um, hey, I don't even want to hear that shit. I mean, they they are who they are, though, and that's fine. They can be them, and we go be us. You know, simple as that. Whatever that means to you. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Yep, <laughs> so, anyway. Whatever that means to you. Whatever that means to you. Um, so, anyway, uh, back to the Balvini. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not gonna second your emotion on that. I can't give it four because I'm still <laughs> I'm still not a Scotch lover. Mm -hmm. um, but I will give it a solid three and a half though. Um, I can't go four yet because okay. it's because it's Scotch. <laughs> I just can't do it yet. So I'm there gonna give go. it. I'm gonna give it a good three and a half. I will tell you this though, it is by far the best Scotch I've ever had. Now I haven't had uh, Johnny Walker, which one of the blue, the blue label. Oh, I think yeah. that's the more expensive one. I haven't had that. It's overrated, so, I think. Okay, so yeah. I, I mean, I, it's I, good. I heard it's good though, but by by far, it's the ones I've experienced. This is the best uh, scotch I had. Again, but I then again, then I'm, I'm sorry, my bad. But then but, again, Johnny Walker's blended too. It's not oh, okay, single malt. Right. It's yeah. not single malt, right? So again, like I I said this earlier in the show, if you are new to the Scotch world, and I think this is a good transition 
from whiskeys and bourbons into kind of the scotch thing because it's it's not as harsh as some of the other scotches mm -hmm. I had. So uh, on that note, though, I think it's been a great discussion, man, as always. And uh, I want to thank you guys, obviously, for checking us out on YouTube and everywhere else that you check us out. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments uh, into the uh, link below, and we can read those on the next show. Or even if you've got some suggestions on what we should do on the next show, leave those down at the bottom as well. And we'll even give you a shout-out on, on IG because, like, we just cool like that. Beers, bourbon, whiskey, all right? So make sure you follow us on IG. Follow my man, Big Cbo 94 all right, and of course, your boy Q.Lewis313 on IG. And uh, we're going to holler at y'all next time. But you know, as always, man, everybody loves BBW. That's beers, bourbon, and whiskey, man. We up out of here, dog. It's your boy, Q. Lewis, holding down live from the 48205. I got my man, Bo, in the building. I'll say. <laughs> Peace out, y'all.